Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Photo Biz Live. This is Danny from the Photo Biz team, and today we're going to be joined by James and Jenny Tarpley from Vizio Photography, and they have a great presentation planned for you today. They're going to be sharing some of the mistakes, misgivings, and motivations in their marketing. They're also going to be discussing the difference between advertising and relational marketing, pitfalls to avoid, and getting the most bang for your buck while appealing to new wedding and portrait clients. James and Jenny are going to give you guys marketing tips that you can immediately apply to your business. So in addition to getting the opportunity to learn from James today in today's webinar, we're going to have a question and answer session at the end. So you can submit your questions using the chat tool, and they're going to be answered at the end of the presentation. You can also join our discussion on Twitter by using the hashtag uh, pound photo biz live. So if at any point during today's webinar you guys have any difficulty hearing James or myself during the slides, you can just use the comment box and leave us a note directly in the chat box. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn things over to James. Hey guys, um, it's great to be here today. And um, as Danny mentioned, we're a husband and wife team. Um, I apologize for my voice today. We've been kind of getting over a little bug over the last few days, but um, great to be here with you. Um, I wanted to start off just by sharing a little bit about kind of how we started um, our our company, no doubt. We, we've, we've learned a lot of lessons along the way, and so a lot of what we'll be discussing today will be just that, will be um, kind of myths that we first thought to be true when it came to marketing and how uh, many of those we failed miserably at. And so hopefully you can, you know, have some takeaways from that. Um, also today, I realize, um, kind of as a as an aside, when when you hear a marketing seminar, you get together and hear someone present um, this very much, and and I want to encourage everyone out there to kind of take take this with a grain of salt. A lot of this that we um, have experienced over the years is very much to our specific um, clientele, to our the number of weddings that we're desiring to take each year, to the lifestyle that we're desiring to have, and so. Some of this you know, may or may not apply to your specific place. Um, the majority of this, though, is, is kind of across the board. But uh, my, my hope for today is that you have some, some major takeaways that you can apply today um, and tomorrow for your business to help you succeed. Uh, when we first started, um, we, we started about seven, uh, coming on eight years ago full time. And we had photographed a number of weddings prior to that. But as, as many getting into the industry, you shoot for some family and friends and, and that kind of thing. Um, our, our first year, um, you know, we initially thought, well, you know, we're, we're just starting up. We need to go, to go to a wedding show. So we went to a wedding show and actually booked 10 weddings from that show, um, which come to find out that is not necessarily the norm. Uh, we were asking folks around, how did you do? And they're like, oh, I think I did great. I think I've booked two or I think I booked three. And um, from that, we started really considering, okay, maybe, maybe we're – you know, I don't know if this is a good thing or, or what. And of course, we all know that at, at that point, booking that many um, wasn't necessarily a smart thing. Our first year, we we photographed 44 weddings, and um, we realized that we were headed toward burnout in a hurry. Um, we um, we decided the first year that we wanted the best of everything, which nothing's wrong with that. Um, all of our lenses, uh, we, you know, nothing slower than 2.8. Everything I core, uh, we we are not con shooters, and um, I remember one one time in particular that a bride told us, um, you know, she was getting ready to send in her deposit, and um, and some of you would gasp at this, and I kind of do now when I think about it. Um, I, we actually told her, I said, if you know, just to let you know, we're, we've got this special lens we would love to shoot your wedding with. If you want to go ahead and send in your deposit, we'll <laughs> we'll have that for your wedding. So not exactly the smart way to, to go in with a, a client, but um, but through that year, that, that year taught us a tremendous amount. Um, that that really, um, for one, our comfort level was not 44, 50 weddings. Now, for some of you, that may be uh, you may be a higher volume studio, and that's fantastic. Um, our comfort level is is at 15 to 20 weddings. Um, we'll be primarily today talking about wedding and portrait photography. At the same time, if you're in um, commercial or advertising or, or different genres of photography, this a good bit of this will apply as well. Um, so, so that first year we realized, okay, we don't want to go big. We, we're, we're not wanting to be a high volume studio. We're wanting to be a smaller, um, more uh, of a boutique studio, uh, which that phrase wasn't really around when we first started. But um, I, I love um, the idea of being um, more exclusive, um, 
really taking care of our clients, and, and we're going to talk about that more today. So when we started out, you know, we um, I, I read a number of books and um, kind of checked out the market, did some research, and, and all of that, and we wanted to see what was. Um, I'm trying to change the slide here. Um, you know, which which direction do we need to go? And so we kind of fell into a number of these kind of myths of marketing, and. Um, a lot of these maybe you've heard or at least you've seen um, sense of or evidence of. And um, The first thing, when we first started our business, we thought, okay, we're starting up. We need to brand ourselves. You know, I mean, that, that's, that's the first thing we need to do. Um, and at the time, I thought branding was simply a logo and some letterhead. Um, I was obviously sorely mistaken. I also thought that we control our brand, that you know, whatever we put out there, um, that, was, that was what people would think our business to be. Um, we always hear phrases like changing our brand or update our brand or, or create brand awareness. Um, in reality, your brand is you. Um, you know, when, when, you, um, um, when you hear people talking about branding and, and, and whatnot, it's, it's everything that, that you present as a company, everything that, that people think of you. And um, Laura Lake, a, um, um, a, a marketer guru, marketing guru, actually said it this way, branding is the sum total of their experiences, and then she's speaking of clients or customers, of their experiences and perceptions, some of which you can influence and some that you cannot. Um, so th this kind of helped us realize that, okay, marketing is not branding in itself. Um, branding may be a, a portion of that, but it, it's not all encompassing. And also we realize that we, in essence, don't control our branding. Um, even though we, we will brand um, an envelope or packaging or business cards, um, that's not the full extent to what people are experiencing over our company. And so we need to remember that, that our brand is a lot more than just a logo. Um, another myth that we um, realize and continue to realize is not true, um, and many um, magazines and online companies and otherwise would have you believe it to be true, is that marketing equals advertising. Um, that is false. Um, Early on, we believed that, that to market we had to spend a lot of money. Um, I mean, people have to hear about us, right? Uh, we, we purchased magazine ads, bought advertising from wedding shows, paid to be in all kinds of listings. Um, we were really flattered when a very prestigious wedding magazine called us, um, complimenting our work, which, by the way, that is the trend. They will, people always call and compliment your work. They're, they're wanting your business. Um, asking if we would be a preferred vendor. Um, to be honest, I was like, oh, man, I got off the phone. I'm like, they called us. We're going to be a preferred vendor. Um, and for only $2,500, we could do that. Um, it, it was uh, exclusive and prestigious. And, and to be honest, we bought it hook, line, and sinker. Um, we, we did that for a couple of years, uh, dishing out quite a bit of money and, um, and realizing very little response. In fact, when uh, folks would come to our studio, they would... Uh, you know, I'd ask them, do you have a copy of this latest wedding magazine? And, um, and they would say, no, no, I'm not familiar with that. Um, and some of these were very high-end clients, definitely our clientele that we were um, you know, hoping to attract and, and um, work with. And, um, but they had never heard of the magazine, or many of them hadn't gotten it or, or weren't, weren't readers of it. And so we started realizing then that, um, that we need, um, that one, I was marketed to. Um, I was advertised to. Um, I, I had that sense of belonging and that sense of importance. Um, they tapped into my need for that um, as an advertiser. And so that was, that was a lesson as well in terms of marketing um, to others and realizing that people want to feel special, that people want to belong, that they want to feel important. Um, and so, you know, I'm not slamming on magazine advertisement by any means, but it's, it, it's, something to be very careful of and, and to evaluate your market, your target audience, and what benefit you get out of that as well. So what's the difference? What's the difference between um, advertising and marketing? Advertising is always a form of marketing, but marketing isn't always advertising. Um, advertising is a one-way communication of by me. It's kind of how I think of it. Whereas marketing is more of a conversation between two people. Um, it's a give and a take. As well, um, Marketing is, and it, it's it's more of an all-encompassing strategy. You know, we, we hear about that a, a marketing strategy. It's not just what we do, but it's who we are as a company. It incorporates the branding that we talked about, um, and we're not going deeply into branding because that's not really um, what this topic is today. But but it's it's 
branding, it's advertising, it's the entire experience. Um, the face is the branding, your website, your storefront, printed materials, um, but ultimately you are your brand. Um, and as we've, have, you know, we've probably heard people say before, people don't hire you, um, or, or don't hire a photographer rather, they hire you. It's more personal interaction. Um, the, goal, the goal of most advertising is to attract new customers. And as photographers, we need to move from simple advertising for our products or services to building, really building a strategy that's about communication, it's about community, and we see that with social networking we'll talk about in a moment, um, really building customer loyalty and, um, and ultimately love. And that may sound <laughs> cheesy to you, but, um, but really we're wanting to have a connection with our clients that so they come back and they say, wow, you, you photographed my wedding and I was blown away. I want to connect with you in a different way and photograph my children. Um, in a few years, and, and I, I want you to, to photograph this family picnic or this get-together or all these different things. We want to be a part of their lives, and so that moves beyond advertising um, to, a, to a little different strategy. But um, if marketing to existing clients and vendors goes further than that, then, then how do we do it? How do we, how do we get there? And um, one is, and this is a, a, another um, myth as well, and I'll put the slide up, and oh, did I miss it? Yeah, there it is. Um, another myth is if you build it, they will come in terms of a website. Um, this is not true, and Photobiz realizes this, and they have these amazing tools um, to use for this. When we first started, I knew we needed to advertise. I knew we needed our branding, but we also needed to have an online presence. And um, I, I mistakenly thought that the first step for every business was to launch a website. Okay, I've got my business. I, I need to toss out a website. In reality, in hindsight, my first step for my business should have been to have a clear vision and direction to, to have a formulated business plan. Um, that's super important. And um, we're um, not covering business plans today, but if you're just starting your business, I would encourage you to um, both consult an attorney and um, a CPA, talk about you know, your, your business with them on the legal aspects as well as the tax implications, but also come, come together with a plan of where you want to be where, where are you going to be in one year, five years, 10 years, 20 years? Um, and then you can be, begin building that website that can clearly state your vision and direction um, of, of your company. So at the time, I wanted, to, I wanted a website that would tell who we are, what we charge, show every good Im image we've taken, um, have some fun transitions and effects. Um, I learned some HTML and some Flash and, and built it myself. And it was fantastic. No, it really, it was terrible. Actually, I look back now and um, I have the, the website stored and for, for giggles every now and then I'll go back and just watch it. And um, it, it, is, it is terrible. And um, I, I thought I wanted to do everything through, through our website. Um, and, and in reality, a website is, um, and, and even though there are so many bells and whistles and things that you can do with it, and, and I'll get into this more later, there has to be a clear directive for, telling the client or prospective client, what do I want you to do? Um, you're, you're here on my website, but what am I wanting, what action am I wanting you to accomplish for us? It's to give us a call and, um, or, or to, to set up an appointment, to connect with us on Facebook, email. Um, Seth Godin, who I encourage you to, to check out his stuff as well, um, said this, a website must do at least one of two things, but probably both. Turn a stranger into a friend and a friend into a customer talk in a tone of voice that persuades people to believe the story you're telling. And that is super important, believing the story you're telling, because we're, we're all telling a story of some kind. Um, for, for me, um, our website, and, and we have a number of websites, actually, Photobiz, I believe we have uh, six or seven websites hosted uh, through Photobiz. They're with different aspects of our business, um, our, our fine art, our portraits, um, our, our main you know, wedding site, but also um, a separate pricing website that we have, um, and um, uh, workshops websites and, and things like that. Um, I think clarity with the website is, is really important, keeping it simple. Um, a website is a marketing tool to help folks take the next step. So with, with our website, we wanted it to be very clear um, you know, with, with uh, simple tabs. I've heard this before, and I, and I think it's important to, um, you know, you can load your website down with images, but have more galleries and fewer images in each gallery so that people don't kind of get bored clicking the button or going through. Um, you want to engage them to a different level. So 
um, I think we have 15 or more than 20 images in a gallery, but we have multiple galleries that we can add in. Uh, we also have links to our Facebook and Twitter, which is made really easy um, through Photo Biz as well. Um, now this this is kind of a a little controversial, um, uh, maybe, I don't know why it would be, but um, some people put pricing on their websites, some don't. Um, for us, and I, and I add that in there very carefully, for us, it really works not to have pricing on our general website. And you may say, well, why? Um, again, because a website is, is very much one-dimensional. It's more visual than anything. Um, it may or may not have sound. It has, has no touch, smell, personality but besides what's on the screen. So by connecting one step further, by um, them calling us, and, and now there's a voice in, incorporated, and, and it's taking it to a different level, um, especially if they meet us in person, uh, we can involve all their senses into the relationship, not just the visual. And so all that being said, we have a, a, a separate website altogether that we do for pricing. And um, you're welcome to visit it. We're not, we're not hoarders of pricing and stuff, but um, it's pricing.vizio.photography.com. Um, we wanted to have this separate so that it was very clear and distinct. When someone visits our, our galleries, I want them to enjoy the images and fall in love. I want them to be sold on us beyond any doubt. As we discuss pricing, obviously pricing can be a barrier, and that's fine. Um, I can't tell you the number of folks, though, that maybe haven't been able to hire us for their wedding, but we could refer to another photographer. Um, how many that, that maybe, you know, we were already booked on their date, but they booked us for bridals or engagements or post-wedding shoots. Um, we, we've booked um, dozens of, of events, um, even when the couple wasn't able to necessarily book us for their wedding. So um, I see that as a, as a great um, advantage to connect with other photographers by referrals, as well to connect with those clients um, in a more personal way. So with a website or blog site, um, um, you know, you have only one or two pages to tell a story and encourage the visitor to do what you want them to do. Then they move on. Um, I, I kind of have the KISS method, keep it simple, stupid. Um, uh, music, no, no music. Um, to me, one or the other, we, we have music on our website, and it works. Um, it's whatever fits your brand, whatever builds on that brand and, and fits you. Um, clean, simple design and navigation. There's so many great templates um, and, and things that you can do with PhotoBiz that, that, are, that are great. Not too much text. Um, I'm really big on this. I think it should be simple. Um, if you put too much text in, it immediately goes to left brain, which is the more analytical side. Um, I think it's important to, to keep it um, very, very visually stimulating. Um, in terms of image selection, we kind of have three criteria for images. Um, one is a sense of awe. So if that um, is just kind of a wow image. Um, if it's a motive, um, so if it... Um, stirs emotion in some way, and also um, a few details here and there. People love details. And of course, with the advent of Pinterest, um, they've gone crazy with details on that as well. Um, but also an easy way for people to connect with us. Um, I want them to connect with us in any way they can. So through our website, they can email us. There's the email form on the website, phone number. Um, they can, you know, if they're on their mobile device, they can click it directly or um, you know, jot it down and call us later. Facebook, Twitter. Um, all of that. Um, and I'll be honest with you, the, the guys that are listening right now, uh, when I designed our first website, which again was horrendous, um, I loved the cool transitions and it was black and it was heavy and it was, it was just like a website I would want. It was very techy. And, um, you know, I, I feel like uh, black background really makes the images pop and that, that looked great. The problem was, and, and, Thank goodness that we have, uh, actually I was going to say two, but with our daughter and, and little dog, you know, we have four females in the office here. And they began saying, you know, this, the website really needs to be a little more feminine. Um, like it or not, our target clientele are women. Uh, whether you're a portrait photographer or a, wed uh, a wedding photographer, your target client is, is a woman. That's, that's who's making the, uh, for the most part, that's who's making the, the purchasing decision. And so we started softening it up a little bit. I went with a little more muted colors, um, you know, we'll, um, very simple, clean white background. Um, I love the textures and, and, and all of that, and some of you that works wonderfully for, again, kind of going back to your branding and your identity as a company. But um, for us, we went really clean and kind of soft um, to attract those, those brides. If a, um, if a wedding, yeah, if, if a website, rather, um, is a handshake, then a blog is a hug. And um, 
a lot of you, um, um, you know, a lot of you understand this dynamic. The website's getting that information to get them to take the next step. The um, the blog is um, is something where you can be more personal. Now, some people I've noticed are really personal, maybe taking a little step too far. Um, so, so um, you know, you want to be careful with that. But but obviously, these dynamics between different levels of communication. You know, as there's an initial like on Facebook, and then they go to your website and they're seeing your work and experiencing that. Then they go to your blog and start learning even more about you. Um, and, and another thing, as you see on the screen. Never quote yourself. That's pretty tacky. Um, <laughs> Jen's punching me in the shoulder for that one. Um, but um, so other myths of marketing. Um, one that um, I'm sure we've, um, or, or actually with the website. Before we go, the big thing is what am I asking people to do? Um, what action are you having? Um, you know, are you wanting that website to perform? Uh, for us, it's connecting on a deeper level, and um, there's great tools to use to to do that. Um, but I want a, a very simple and clean and clear directive through the website so that they're, the whole sense of what they want to do is con contact us. I want to find out how much they charge. I want to find out if they're available for my date. I want to find out you know, all these different things. And so being able to connect with them on a deeper, deeper level is super important. Um, another um, kind of misconception or myth is it, if it's, uh, it's, it's worked in the past, so it'll work in the future, right? Um, or uh, to quote a line from a movie, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, you know, really, uh, this, um, and, and, and we, we know this will this is not the case, especially with Facebook. Um, there's, uh, I'll be honest with you, we were late adopters of Facebook because, to be honest, I thought, well, we're, we're kind of comfortable with the business we have. Um, but the fact is, is the marketing landscape has changed dramatically since Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Flickr. Um, even texting, um, all of this has really kind of changed the way that we um, that we need to market. Unless you've been in business for 20 years and you have a base that comes to you every year for portraits, um, and even then, I think it's really important to connect through social media um, to keep those relationships um, vibrant and to keep at the front of their minds. Um, people are incredibly busy, and um, you know, if if we were sitting in a room together, I'd say how many of you are busy, and of course, all of your hands would go up. Um, but but folks are really busy right now, and so. Um, you know, the the valuable the, the amount that the social networks are valuable is um, it, they make sense. Uh, we're all hurried, we're all rushed. Um, think about it. I was thinking this the other day when I, I texted someone to say that I didn't have time to you know that I'm sorry I didn't have time to call or email. <laughs> um, that's sad. Uh, many of us eat fast food on a regular basis. Um, I saw a post the other day. This is kind of weird that someone's grandmother was in the hospital and. We're asking people to pray for. Um, they had like four likes. I don't know what they were liking, like you know. But nonetheless, we're we're busy. We're we're in a rush. Um, so one thing that um, you know, having having social media strategy is really important. Um, one thing that we do, and and this we'll get into in the, in the next uh, slide, but we do um, some things that uh, that have worked in the past that are now working again in the future with handwritten letters and um, more personal communication. We'll get into that in just a little bit. But um, but a, a social media strategy is super important. Um, Photography-based contests are a great way to generate generate targeted leads. Um, you have to do that according to Facebook's rules, but um, there's some third-party apps that um, are excellent for that as well. Um, right now, the fastest growing market segment is mobile devices. Um, just this month, actually last month, in the U.S. and Canada, smartphones and tablets were generating 20% of all internet traffic. Um, that's that's mind-boggling to me. 20% of all internet traffic in the U.S. and Canada were smartphones and tablets. Globally, the number's at 10%. That is huge, huge growing, um, you know, incredibly fast market in terms of the mobile devices. This is why you know opting in for the um, the mobile website I think is is a given. Um, it's a no-brainer, uh, especially and in, in you can kind of look at this uh, little chart here. Basically, what this says in the past 28 years, the total number of Macs sold was 122 million. Um, there's 122 million Macs sold in the last you know Apple Apple computers sold in the last 28 years. In 2011 alone, if you tally up the iOS devices with iPods and iPads. There's 156 million sold. Um, if your jaw hasn't just dropped, my, I mean, mine does every time I think about it. In 2011, they sold more mobile devices than they have computers since Apple began. 
um, it is greatly on the increase. And um, one of uh, one of the ways that we, um, you know, kind of have have latched onto that is through sticky albums. And I'll, I'll give you a um, a link and, and some information about that. Um, actually, a discount um, for that at the end. Um, but we're seeing more and more integration of phones and tablets, and so we, we need to stay up with the trends so that people will be able to to connect in that way. Um, and, and I'll be honest, I'm I'm the last one that that wants to connect on Facebook. Um, I'll totally be honest with you. I think it's a very smart business decision. I also think that it is kind of a surfacey communication, but that's a whole other philosophical discussion and debate. Um, another uh, kind of the converse of this previous um, myth is that traditional marketing is dead. And um, many people kind of go the opposite direction. They think, well, since Facebook and Twitter and social media outlets, all this stuff going on, then I can pretty much throw out all the traditional marketing, throw it out the window and fo focus strictly on developing my online presence. Um, I think that there's a problem with that as well. The, the limit of social media is, um, ironically, is, is that it's very limited on social connection. Um, really, social networking happens more offline than it happens online. A handshake, an actual physical handshake, is more personal than clicking a like. Um, a conversation, whether that's on the phone, especially in person, is so much better than just a chat. And so, um, again, kind of reinforcing that idea that our website, our blog site, our our social media is to generate that one-on-one -on -one or personal connection. Um, a lot of our um, um, a lot of our clients are destination weddings, and they, they don't live close by, and so many of those um, we try to connect with. If we're not able to meet in person, very minimum a phone call. Um, more uh, more advantageous would be um, through Skype or being able to to see them and, and connect. Um, that way, there's a, a relationship developing and not just um, you know, not just an online presence, but um, we we always tell our couples and encourage them that you know, if at all possible, we'd love to have a bite to eat with you, and be able to show them some some actual printed images, not just not just the slideshows, um, some some books so they can touch and feel and hold, and um, that that begins creating um, more than just a visual um, type of interaction, but really starts creating an experience. And this is this is super important, and this is why, um, kind of moving a little bit, um, uh, a little bit further, this traditional marketing. But um, what kind of experience are you creating um, for your clients? Um, when when folks come, you know, moving beyond uh, the computer, we're the fact is is we're sensual beings. Um, the touch, smell, taste, sight, sound, all of that plays into our purchasing decisions, and ultimately that leads us to loving a product. Or a service, or or not, um, and so um, someone asked us. Um, it's been a few years ago, and uh, a funny question. And, and I'd like to ask you guys today. But um, Julia Woods, um, fantastic photographer, um, up, uh, just outside of Chicago area, um, asked us this. She said, "What does your business smell like?" And um, <laughs> some of you right now, I know, I know what you're thinking. Some of you are like, "Oof, not real good right now." Um, but but it, it's an interesting question, um, but but a valid one. Uh, when you think about it, like the olfactory nerve is located really close to the hippocampus, uh, which is the memory center of the brain. Um, it's are we creating memories? Yes, we we should be memory you know um, memory capturers. That's our job. And so so what kind of memories are we creating? What kind of experience are we creating with a client? Uh, we we kind of took this to the next level and thought you know if 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 smell really um, triggers memory and, and, and forms a connection that's beyond just the visual, then I want them to associate a certain smell with our studio. <laughs> and that's a good one. That's not like burnt pizza or something, you know, um, or uh, a lot of other bad things. But um, what, what we wanted them to do, and so what we did is we started, actually at that time, we were doing wedding shows and festivals, and uh, we, would, we had this certain smell that was distinctly Vizio. That was like our smell. We sprayed the booth. And there was this little different fragrance that when they came through, and they're like, huh. And then, and, and a couple of people pointed this out, and I love it when they pointed it out, they recognized it. When they received the information packet in the mail, well, what had we done? We spritzed that box with that same scent. So they received it, and there's a connection between, you know, there's this continuity between the wedding festival and this information packet. And then they come to the studio, and we have candles lit, and have this certain environment that's created. Um, I wanted them to, to feel cozy and at home. Um, and, and we'll 
I'll talk about that here in a second, but, but that same smell was in the air. Again, keeping that continuity between wedding festival information packet and, and now the experience at the studio. Um, are we creating a good a good experience? Um, what is your brand? You know, asking questions like this, I think, is important. Um, what does your brand taste like? Um, what is your you know what's your company taste like? Is it more of a, a dark chocolate, something really rich, or is it something a little light and smooth? You know, um, these, these might be crazy questions, but I think the more of a sensory experience our clients can have, the more connected with us they'll become. Um, Starbucks definitely gets that. Um, you know, we, we want to go to Starbucks and hang out in the, the comfy chairs under the cool lighting, smell and taste the coffee. Um, it's more than just coffee. It's, a, it's an entire experience. Um, in fact, Starbucks, uh, and I can't remember where I read the article, but it was a little while back, they changed their roasters um, because they were saying they were too loud. There was a grinding sound as they were making coffee. And so they wanted to do away with that. Well, in the pilot stores that they tested it on, people complained. Um, they, they weren't sure that they were getting the same coffee that they had gotten before. Why? Because they associated that sound, the smell, the sound, the music, the, you know, that entire environment with their good coffee. Um, so so they, they got that. They changed that out. Um, with us and, and with photographers, the experience tar starts with that first exposure a company has with your business. If that's a magazine ad, a featured wedding on a blog, um, maybe coming across your website on Google, that initial exposure is the beginning of their experience. Then it comes to the initial phone call. Um, you know, what is, what is your conversation like on the phone? Uh, one of the things that we tell everybody when we call, and, and I mean this genuinely, um, we'll say whether or not you hire us as your photographer, um, if we can help you with anything with your wedding, you know, feel free to give us a call. If you have any advice you need or anything, don't hesitate to call us. And I genuinely mean that. But what does that, what does that say to the client? That says they really care, and, and we do. I want them to have an amazing wedding experience, regardless if I photograph their wedding or not. So, you know, a, a big part of it is is to show them that we're not. I'm not just trying to sell you something, but I, I care about you as a person. Um, we have a, a questionnaire that we send out to all of our all of our couples, and um, in that questionnaire, it talks about their likes, dislikes. Um, you know, if they if they like uh, beer or wine, if they like light or dark chocolate, or you know, um, who in who in their life has inspired them the most. It has this long list of questions, and we send it and encourage them to have a little date and fill these out. Uh, we've gotten a great response um, from folks, as uh, many say that they had a, a great evening um, almost playing this game um, with this questionnaire. Um, when a client comes to the house, um, which we work out of our home, we wanted to create an environment that they would very much um, enjoy, but one that, that they could comfortably look at the images and and be able to, to be um, in that environment. So they come in, there's candles lit, there's that scent, again, that's causing that continuity over other contacts they've had with us. Um, there's a slideshow with music. Um, if, you know, if it's in the evening or whatnot, we'll offer them a glass of wine or water or coffee, have different things. Um, we want them to be in a happy place because, I mean, happy couples buy more prints, and more prints equals happy photographers. <laughs> so, so really, you know, this, it, this is a, this is a, whole, a whole process. Um, back to uh, the, the topic at hand, traditional marketing is dead, and obviously we know that's not the case. One of the things that I think is really important, in, additional, in addition to the online presence and online uh, social media interaction, is written, handwritten notes, um, welcomes, thank yous. It's a personal touch. Everything, of course, is branded and has our signature feel. It's very cohesive. But that, again, helps create um, the sense that, hey, they care about me as a person. It's, it's a part of, that's a part of their experience. Um, so get to know your market. Who are they? What type of customers? Um, this um, I thought was really, um, really good because there's um, a couple of different type of uh, customers that you interact with. And um, um, Roy Williams, not the famous basketball star, but... Um, the marketing Roy H. Williams um, said this, that there's transactional shoppers and there's relational shoppers. And transactional shoppers are focused on today's transaction. They, they don't think a whole lot about future purchases. It's about today and this, uh, which leads to their only fear is paying too much. They're looking for price and value. Uh, they enjoy the process of comparing and negotiating, and, and they'll likely go around and shop a number of places before making their decision. How, how many have, have you met with that said, um, you know, 
we'll, we're, we have we have two other meetings today with other photographers, or I just met with another photographer. Um, they're shopping around to see if they're getting value in, in, in what they're receiving. Transactional shoppers do their own research, so they won't need help from an expert. Um, typically, they uh, you know they may look at the rating sites and things like that um, themselves, as opposed to hiring a coordinator that will handle it all. The, you know that will handle it all. Um, because they enjoy the process, they don't consider their time spent shopping to be part of the purchase price. And then they're also, the, the huge advantage to transactional shoppers are they're very anxious to share the good deal they found. Um, this is, you know, this gives them a, a, a prideful sense. They, they're great sources for word of mouth. Now contrast this with relational shoppers. And, and again, not every shopper is going to fit neatly into each of these categories, but it's, I think it's important for us to evaluate who we're selling to, and, and that will help know how to sell, how to market. Relational shoppers consider today's transactions to be one in a long series of many future purchases. Um, they're looking less for a product than for a store in which to buy it. They are looking for relationship, these uh, relational shoppers. Their only fear is making a poor choice. So interesting as the opposite is transactional, their fear is paying too much. Uh, relational shoppers will purchase as soon as they have confidence. And, um, and that's the question we ought to ask ourselves is, will, will our studio, our staff, give them confidence they seek? Um, you know, when they, when they raise um, an objection or, or say, well, what about this? Then we quickly have a response that takes care of any of those obje objections. Um, they don't enjoy the process of shopping and negotiating necessarily, um, like the transactional shopper does. Relational shoppers are looking for, uh, principally, principally for an expert they can trust. Many of these will be working with coordinators or um, a bridesmaid or, or um, some, someone that's going to help them make those decisions, someone that's been through the process before. Um, and they do consider their time to be part of the purchase price. Um, once they're confident they've found the right place to buy, relational shoppers are very likely to become repeat customers. And so you have these, these different dynamics. Um, and, um, and I, I think it's important to kind of know who we're selling to and the best way in which to, to, to be able to market to the, those groups. Um, another, another marketing myth, and, um, and I've, I've been, I say this is a myth, I, I hear this a lot online, um, especially on Facebook, photographers complaining that, um, oh man, it's gotten so saturated that, that all this competition is just ruining my business. And, um, and I don't want to put any of you off, but, but I'll, I'll be honest with you, when I, when I hear this, it kind of grates at me a little bit. Um, all this competition is ruining my business. No, the fact is, is if your business is, is, is suffering right now, it's, it's you. It's not your competition. Um, you know, I have no, uh, no ulterior motives in saying that. It's just true. Um, are we really marketing where we need to market? Are we understanding our market? Are we spending our, our, our hard-earned dollars in the right areas? Um, if that's... Um, magazine's great for us. It's very much um, getting involved with our existing clients and with current. Um, I think money is much better spent if I can develop relationships within the industry than trying to um, advertise. In fact, we do very little paid advertising. Um, the type of marketing that we really um, that we've seen pay its way in dividends is taking someone out to eat. The, there's a new venue. Let's let's take them out to eat and have have dinner. Go go check out their space, and um, show them that I care about them as people over just um, a way to fill my my. I was gonna say my pocketbook. That sounds weird. A way to fill my wallet, but um, um, Jen's pocketbook. Um, differentiation is the key in reaching your market. Um, there are a lot more photographers, no doubt, and I'm not ignoring that. Um, I think we have to set ourselves apart. And um, how do we do that? And I, th I think there's three key ways that we set ourselves apart from others around us. Um, one is, um, are, are your products, um, also service, and your presentation. Um, when it comes to products, what are you offering that's unique? Um, it, we get calls all the time, and, and, and understand this, I love um, sharing with folks, I love seeing people do better in their, in their businesses. But honestly, it, it bugs me to death when someone just down the street will call and say, hey, what book company do you use? Uh, what's your favorite action? Um, and, and why does that bug me? Because that starts really saturating the market with the same products, with the same exact thing. Uh, we ought to be differentiating ourselves. Um, everything was, we'll start looking vanilla if we're all using the same book company and the same presentation and, and the same um, 
you know, different nuances of service that we offer. Um, so I think it's really important. Um, one of the ways with products that we differentiate ourselves, um, we we offer our, our books. One, we, we do our own printing. Um, I think that that's been huge. We're able to offer fine art prints and um, other printed items that, that many photographers don't offer um, and, and can offer through their, their labs. Um, we really try to find products that stand out, um, that um, whether it's for someone that wants something a little more vintage or someone that wants something really modern, uh, we want to provide something unique. Um, I don't want to give a wedding book that looks just like the wedding book of the weekend before. Um, it's got to be distinct and different. Um, that's why as well, um, and, and I know that uh, templates really help um, you know, speed up the process in book design. Um, we don't use any templates. I don't, I don't want any book to look like the one before or, or another one. And so we're really careful with that, that our products stand out. Also service. Um, are you offering a level of service that moves beyond just a wedding vendor to a friend? Uh, we talked about kind of creating that love connection. Um, and, and really, I mean, is, um, when, when we photograph a wedding, and, and, and here's, the, here's the deal, you know, when, when we say all competition is ruining my business, all this you know, influx of photographers, if I photograph a wedding, and there are unwed bridesmaids there, and they don't hire me for their wedding, whose fault is it? Um, it's mine. Um, I, I want to, I need to be there to make them want us. Um, chances are bridesmaids in your, in your weddings right now, they're in a similar socioeconomic level as the bride. Not always, but for the most part. So if they're getting married in the next six months to a year, they, we need to be the first on their mind. If they book another photographer, that's my fault, not the other photographers. Um, I either didn't provide um, a unique enough product, either they didn't like my work, and, and some, sometimes, you know, I understand, sometimes it's just a stylistic thing. They really want a photojournalist and not a stylist. They really want, um, you know, someone that specializes in film as opposed to digital or, or, or whatnot. I understand that. But for the most part, we should, um, you know, weddings ought to be perpetuating. Uh, we're, we're getting clients from, many clients from our existing weddings. Um, so, so what is that level of service that makes them want to come back? And then finally, presentation. Um, in marketing, presentation drives reality. And um, you know, uh, the fact is, is there's a perceived value. Um, if I go, in fact, I, I looked uh, just recently on uh, the Sam's Club website, and you can order um, a diamond ring from Sam's Club. It's like Costco for those of you in other parts of the country. Um, Sam's Club, you can get a diamond ring, an engagement ring, for $95,000. Um, I, I wonder how that would be if I brought home to Jen. And I said, I bought you a ring, sweetie. What do you think? And I, I unpacked this, this brown box that in it is a $95,000 ring, but it says Sam's Club stamped on the outside. What kind of presentation does that have? Um, and then you think about it. What type of presentation does it have if I give her this pretty kind of aqua blue box that has Tiffany's on the side with this pretty white bow. Um, totally different presentation. Now, chances are the diamond ring that I get at Sam's Club will probably be a very similar diamond to the one I get at Tiffany's. If I'm paying $95,000, then it's going to be IGA certified, and it's clarity and cut, and all the C's are, are right where they ought to be. Um, but the fact is, is there is a, there's a perception, a perceived value, that when I get something from Tiffany's, it is top of the line. When I get something from Sam's, it's discount. Um, so what do we do with that? When we present our books, um, I want to make sure that there is a slipcase on the books. Um, there's a, a great company, uh, what's the name of the company? Um, that pr we, we actually, Jen's mom makes our, our covers for our books that are beautiful fabric, silks and stuff. Chris Q is a company that actually um, provides those that you can purchase online. Um, beautiful presentation. Um, all the boxes, we always have ribbons over the boxes. With every book, we have two white gloves and a fine art card that says how to take care of your book. Everything, of course, is branded um, with, with our, our custom branding um, because that, again, is going to be something that, that they, um, they have a perception of that value, and there is value in that. Um, finally, we're going to move on quickly here. Folks we love, and, um, and these are just a, a few of the companies that we love working with that has helped our uh, not only presentation and marketing and um, ultimately helped our business because we're able to connect with the client on a deeper level. And um, you guys probably can guess the first one I'm going to say. Um, and, and, and I'll be honest, um, 
regardless if we're given this or not. Um, and, and by the way, that cute girl on the front, that's Emma. It's our little girl. But um, no, Photobiz, um, I can't say enough about them. And um, some of you may have called us before you went with Photobiz. We've talked with a number of photographers that are deciding on a website company. And uh, to be honest, their their customer support. Um, we we used um, we've used two other companies prior to Photobiz. And to be honest, um, Photobiz blows them up out of the water. Um, the the options, I would encourage everybody to get the mobile site, um, especially because of the increase in mobile traffic. Um, but um, they have been phenomenal for a business. I don't, and I don't need to tell you guys because that's um, obviously what um, you're, you're on here. Most of you are, are Photobiz customers, but, um, but they've been phenomenal. Um, another um, way to um, take care of that, like I said, the uh, word of mouth marketing um, is through sticky albums. This is basically a software that you can create your own um, app. Um, you drop images into it, send them a link, and the couple can download um, you know, this nifty little app. Um, if, you, if you'd like, feel free to um, check out their website, or if you'd like me to send you one, um, one of the apps we've created for our clients, uh, feel free to send us an email. Um, this, is a, this is a great service, and it's, it's very value-added. Um, some people sell these, which is great. We use them um, as kind of a sneak peek for our clients. Um, the cool thing about this is it's not um, web-based. I mean, it is web-based creating it, but when you give it to your client, they can open it anytime, anywhere. So they're at work, and they have no access to Facebook, but they can still show people their images. That's huge. Uh, jot down the code if you would. If, you, if you'd like to use this Live35, then you'll get $35 off of your um, pro membership with them. Um, another company... And um, we're not we're not paid by any of these companies, so I'll be totally honest with you. Um, my last experience with Hexagon Tech wasn't stellar, um, but they have these amazing um, boxes that uh, that this is how we present. If we sell high res images, uh, we present them on a thumb drive. These are are very secure. Um, they can't wipe them, can't erase them. Um, we we still tell them to copy them to their their drive and everything. Um, at this point, Pexagon Tech is the only one that has this specific lockable drive, and um, it comes in an engraved wood. They did a beautiful job with, um, you know, this presents incredibly well, um, adds a lot of value. And, um, and then finally, um, some uh, of the music companies, Triple Scoop, Song Freedom, awesome, popular music, uh, great place. Uh, they're going up on prices in the next two days, so I would encourage you to hop on. It's like 25 bucks a song. And you can use it for any single project. Um, really nice. Triple Scoop and Music Bed has a number of, uh, of uh, variety of music as well. I'll go through quickly so we can get to Q and A. Sorry, I'm a little late, guys. Um, and then finally, and these are just a, a few um, books. I, I, I didn't put a slide. Go ahead. Um, didn't put a slide up um, about which specific books, but um, basically, The E Myth Revisited by Gerber is a must-have marketing book. Um, Love Marks um, by uh, Roberts, he's the uh, CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi, amazing book, um, talking about creating a, a bond with your clients. Uh, Phillips and Raspberry, The um, uh, Marketing Without Advertising, another excellent book. Um, and then finally, recently, well, there's Tom Peters on Design, um, if you're jotting these down, um, excellent book as well, having to do with the visual aspect and the design of a not only products, but your storefront and everything. Um, and then Worth Every Penny um, is recently by um, Verbeck and, and Sarah Petty. Um, she is a photographer, um, but as well, she's a brilliant marketer, and um, I would encourage everyone to grab Worth Every Penny. Um, it is indeed worth every penny. But um, anyway, I hope there's some takeaways from today. Uh, we'll kind of open it up to um, question and answer. Um, as well, if, if you know we don't get all... To, uh, to all of the questions today, feel free to shoot us an email. I uh, see our, our website on the screen. Uh, my email address is just james at visiophotography.com. Thank you guys so much. And we'll turn it over to Danny. Great, James. Thank you for the amazing presentation today. And indeed, we do have some great questions that people have already started chatting in. So to all the attendees, you know, while you're here, thank you for tuning in. And go ahead and just filter in your questions through the chat tool. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of work my way down here for you guys with some of the questions that we have. Um, we're going to go ahead. The first question is from Suzanne, and she noticed that you had your pricing site on a separate site, and was just curious. Do you actually you don't have that listed on there? You do you send people that link? Is that what how you guys send them over to yeah. that? 
we do, and um, and there's, I mentioned a little bit of of, of why we do that. Um, we have a completely separate site for pricing, for a couple of reasons, and I understand both rationales behind this. Um, you know, the advantage of having your pricing on your website is if there are those that are just kind of tire kickers, they see where you start, and they don't get discouraged, and and you know they can either accept or not. What we found is honestly, um, where pricing is set currently, there are some folks that that haven't budgeted that amount for their photography. Once they make a connection, many times they will stretch their budget to get that because we've we've made a more personal connection. So I want them to fall in love with us and then we can discuss numbers. Um, that's just kind of the way that we would do it. Um, that separate site um, is, is through Photoviz as well and um, we just set it up to where actually the site um, is, is useful in a number of ways. We, we have all of our book information so after after the wedding they can go and see the um, cover options for their book and um, our a la carte menu and um, different different pricing options through that site as well. So it's not only that initial visit with with wedding collections, but it's also post wedding. Um, we use the site to um, you know, so that pricing is very clear. Um, while we don't have our wed our wedding pricing on our website itself, because I see that very much as a marketing tool, um, at the same time we're very clear about our pricing. I I'm not. I can't stand the whole bait and switch thing or you know anything like that. So we're we're very clear. They have all of our pricing um, up front before they hire us. Um, they're going to see all of that very clearly. So yes. All right, and we did have two a very two very similar questions. One from John, and one here from Laura. And they both kind of mentioned that they're just kind of starting out. Um, they're just starting out with their photography business so congrats to you guys first off yeah definitely. And, congratulations yeah and then so Laura and John both had similar questions you know she wanted to know do you guys have any suggestions for how to break into her particular market and uh, John's was uh, more you know is there any uh, advice you would give for someone to market besides to just their close friends yeah um, when we're first starting out I mean um, there's there's a couple of couple of dynamics. One is obviously building a body of work that um, that can showcase what you do. And so you know if, if I'm starting right now, the fact is is I I will quite possibly be photographing some family or friends or um, those close to me so that I can build my and continue to build my portfolio. Um, I'm I'm kind of a stickler on this. If you're second shooting a wedding, um, to me that is. You, very much your second shooting. Um, the purpose of that is not necessarily to build your portfolio, um, unless that's okay with the primary photographer. You know, if if they say, "Hey, come come along with me and and you know use these images for your website," great. Um, but I, I do think it's important to note that you know, that you were seconding a wedding and and captured these images. Um, also, when it came, comes to portfolio building, um, there seems to be a trend of going to workshops and um, and and I'll. I'm sure there will be some disagreement with me on this, but that's okay. Um, going to workshops and building portfolio that way. Um, to me, to be honest with you, I just feel it's dishonest. Um, if someone else is setting up lighting and hiring the model and, and doing all this work and then I just hit the shutter, it, it's it's not necessarily my picture. Um, it's it's their, their setup, their modeling, their lighting, all of that. And so um, I do have, uh, you know, I would encourage folks to, to work with family and friends. Um, and, and shoot constantly. You know, our, mine and Jen's big thing, we dove in feet first. I mean, um, not only were we photographing weddings, we were second shooting weddings. We were, um, I was reading constantly. We were testing, con our, our daughter probably has 10,000 shots of her because we're setting up lighting scenarios and, and how, how will this light look and what is, you know, let's, let's work with off-camera flash and let's do some light painting and all this stuff. So, um, so to answer that question, yeah, building portfolio is important starting off. But build those relationships. Um, I do think the wedding festivals and, and wedding um, shows can be really beneficial when you're first starting out. Um, but understand this: you're in a huge pool of photographers. So when you're when you're first starting out, differentiation is really important. So differentiate yourself in every way possible. Um, and then you can start. You know, one of the reasons we went to wedding shows was not necessarily for for brides because um, brides were. You know, ninety percent of our brides were using coordinators. Um, the majority of the reason why we went to the shows was to connect with other wedding vendors, um, the coordinators, the locations, the florist, all of that. We built some great relationships over the years that um, you know we give them images and, and get them published in magazines and 
have a great relationship and and in return you know they've um, sent us some wonderful sweet couples so so yeah I think starting off you know building that portfolio and as well um, investing the dollars in the right places uh, for, for you there may be a regional or local magazine that gets a lot of wedding exposure awesome you know um, that means still to differentiate your ad from everyone else's um, we, we recently actually we don't do much paid advertising but we put a put an ad in a, a local um, uh, magazine uh, we had a featured wedding as well my ad didn't have any images in it um, it just had a, a simple phrase um, and we we did that because every other ad had all these images splashed on there. I want I want it to catch them, catch their attention, and be different. So, you know, anyway, yeah, differentiate yourself, build that portfolio, and invest in the right places, which are, which are not necessarily traditional advertising venues. That's some great advice that you're giving to both of them, James. Um, moving on to the next question here. Um, this question came in and. Um, I don't want to pronounce your name wrong. I think it's uh, Kairu. Um, it says, if you don't have the luxury to have a studio, where would you suggest meeting your clients? Yeah, and, and just to, to kind of put that out there, we've never had a studio. So um, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, we work out of our home, and so we, we – let me back up. We have had the luxury of having a meeting space in our home. Uh, we, we have an old 1920s house that, that we uh, renovated downstairs is for the business upstairs is where we live. Um, we're able to create an environment here. Um, at the same time, we've met a lot of people at other places. Um, if we're traveling or uh, we specifically met a, a bride, we're, we're in North Carolina just outside of Asheville. Um, if, if a coordinator calls me and she's like, this, this bride would really love to speak with you, um, and with certain coordinators that we know, I'll drive to Atlanta, drive to Charleston, um, you know, a four or five hour trip if, if I need to invest in that. And, and I know that, wow, this is, this is a, a smart move. We're going to go down, find a nice restaurant or, or meeting place. Um, I think the biggest thing is, um, I, know, I know a lot of folks will meet at like a Starbucks. Um, the biggest thing is to meet in a place that you can talk and, and really make a connection that's not too, too loud or noisy. Um, and, and one that has somewhat of an atmosphere to it. Um, you know, um, that's why Starbucks may work, um, or, or for some of you, you may want to find a nice restaurant in that area or in your local area to meet. I do think um, we've, we've really, I think with the iPad, is a great presentation tool. So if you are meeting someone somewhere else, um, you know, definitely uh, bring the iPad along and um, you know, show some of your work. All right. Well, that's great advice there as well. This question it came in from Rebecca, and she also started to have initial questions about more so with working at home with a family. And uh, you answered one of her questions there, and she had another one. She says, how do you integrate being a parent and working from home, especially bringing your clients to your house? Yeah, and that's a, that's a tough one as well um, to kind of toss in the mix there. We, we homeschool our daughter, and so it's um, – um, and we have a pet. So <laughs> those are some interesting dynamics. Um, typically, we just um, you know we'll we'll lock our daughter in the closet for an hour. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, in, in reality, what what we what we usually do, yeah, Jen's hit me in the shoulder. Um, what we usually do is um, if we're able to have Emma. Um, now, I, I will say this: when people come to our home, there is a different sense than coming to a studio. They understand they're coming to our home. It is a home studio. Uh, even though we have the the room in the front with the projector and, and everything set up really nice, um, at the same time, most of the time we end up back in the kitchen making coffee together. Um, you know, I want them to understand that they are coming to our home. That this is a very personal thing for us. Um, there's there's this balance between professionalism, which is super important, as well as the personal side. I want them to to know that we care about them personally, not just professionally. So you know, if our if our daughter if our daughter is here, um, a lot of times she'll be upstairs and you know, watching a movie or, or or reading, and um, if she needs us, she can come down and we introduce her to the clients. Um, if if our clients just hate kids, our potential client clients, then maybe they're not necessarily our clients anyway. Um, so we we kind of um, when we have someone in our home, as they're interviewing us, in a sense we're interviewing them too, and we want to make sure it's a good fit that. Um, that when we photograph their wedding, which is a really intimate day, that they're they're happy with that relationship. 
All right, I got, I'm going to take a couple more questions here, everybody, and then we'll wrap things up. Um, this question is interesting. It comes in from Patty. So Patty wants your rules or um, I guess more so advice and your thoughts on this. So she's mentioning that um, as she starts to post images to Facebook, more and more it seems like her clients are wanting this and they're very excited about it. But the more she seems to be showing, giving off these first sneak peeks, um, which she thought was a great marketing idea, they seem to become more slow to order. It's almost like a certain mm -hmm. need's already been met, and she feels like she's shooting herself in the foot. Um, you know, is there any kind of way to avoid this or advice as what's going on with that? Yeah, and that's and that's a, uh, thank you. And it, this was Patty that asked this. Yes, it's correct. Um, Patty, thank you so much for bringing that up because that is um, we we noticed something actually a few years ago. This is before. Um, um, this is probably four or five years ago before the big Facebook, you know, everybody was posting everything um, crazed. Um, we had, uh, we posted a slideshow and one of our brides in the studio as they're looking through book information and we were meeting with them. She made this statement. She said, well, honestly, with that slideshow, I almost don't even need a book. And wow, it was like lights went off. Jen and I both looked at each other like, oh my goodness, we were totally shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, so two things that we started doing and, and, and um, with our slideshows, we, we bring them down as soon as their whole wedding gallery is up online. So the slideshow will go up as kind of a sneak peek, and then we pull it down. It's not accessible after that time. Um, Facebook images are a little different. Uh, one of the things that I think is it's important is to limit the number of, of images you put on Facebook. Um, we right now do 12 to 15. To be honest with you, that might be too many. Um, I, you know, we, we've talked recently about lowering that to like five images. I'm um, just a quick sneak peek, not enough to really tell the whole story of their day, but enough to get them excited about what's to come. Um, again, with Facebook a, as well, um, and, and I'm definitely not a fan of some of the recent changes, but I would encourage everybody, for one, to only upload um, images sized for Facebook, not the high-res images, uh, because once you do, those are as well properties um, those can be used by Facebook um, and then also um, brand every image you know watermark everything that goes on Facebook um, that's that's really important because especially with Pinterest people will repost those images and they may link back to another page or, or may not they may have saved them to their hard drive but if you have your your um, your website on there branded that they'll be able you know folks will be able to, to access you um, so yeah I, I totally agree with her um, I think giving them a little less to begin with um, is important, and having cutoff times for slideshows is important as well, so that there's still excitement generated by the book. Yeah, both I'm gonna plans. I'm gonna agree with both of you on that. I mean, sometimes not everyone agrees with this statement. Less is more, but in this case, uh, I'm totally gonna agree with you and think that um, just the small sneak peek online is gonna be a, a better way to approach it. And as as we had a question come in even about you know, branding for images on Facebook. So to, uh, I would recommend, just like you did as well, that people make sure they're, they're watermarking with their logo and, and their website on there. So in case that does end up all over the net, at least it can come back to your website. Definitely. So um, just grabbing uh, one more question if we can. And then a lot of people asked a few times, I know since it wasn't in the slide, James, uh, about those books you mentioned. If, if you just want to email those to me, I can actually send those out to all the attendees as like a, a follow-up message if, you're, if you want to just do that. Okay, the books, the books I was mentioning, the, the slip covers or? Um, the actual the the books that you guys have been recommending, the educational books and just the good reading. Oh, yes, definitely. Definitely. I'll send you a list with that. Yeah, so to all the attendees that were asking about that, I'll, I'll, we'll follow up with you guys with that and uh, we'll provide those to you because a lot of people are interested. I know that a lot of people did ask about Sarah Petty's book, though, and that, that is yeah. the name of that book. Uh, the author, is, her name is Sarah Petty. Correct. Yeah, and it's worth every penny is the name of the book, and it's an excellent read. Um, all right, awesome. Well, I, it looks like we've tried to grab as many questions as we can here, so we're just about out of time. As I mentioned before, if you guys do have questions, you guys can email James or vis visit visiophotography.com, and I would recommend going over there and checking out each one of their PhotoBiz websites. They have some beautiful work, as you can see on the slide right now, and hopefully you'll find some inspiration there as well. Um, I wanted to thank everybody for joining us today and thank James and Jenny for joining us. So thank you guys for taking the time to create a great presentation.
Yeah, thank y'all for having us too. It was um, great being here. I'd, I'd love to meet everybody in person, <laughs> but um, but this is this is really great. Yeah, thank it is. For holding this. Absolutely. So. Thank you everyone for attending and we're going to have more webinars planned out for you guys so just be sure to check out our blog and you guys can see all the future ones coming up there. So we're going to go ahead and wrap everything up and I hope everybody has a great day and if you guys are affected by the weather going on now, try and stay safe and, and make it through that. So thanks again, James and Jen. Thank you. Y'all take care. All right, everybody. Have a great day.